So hopefully you're watching this soon and didn't procrastinate like I do a lot, which is we're going to get to later in the video. But Unraid is doing their new licensing pricing and everything. I know we heard in the past that they talked about all they're going to change to a new license model, but they're not going to screw over the old users. So don't, you know, think, oh, my God, the sky is falling. But, hey, you should get in now before you, you know, it's too late. So, yeah, they did talk about their thing in the past that previously announced the licensing and upgrade. They just didn't have the prices out there. So here we are. Here it is. And well, I guess let's start over a little bit and go talk about like what it was before. So if you want to start with Unraid, and if you're not familiar with Unraid, you got a bunch of damn videos on things, but it's basically your build your own network attached storage for VMs and all the things. It's pretty awesome. I've ran it for years. So I don't mind paying for good software. Yeah, it's not open source and everything, but hey, it does the job and saves me a lot of time and it's pretty damn awesome. So the old pricing was, and it was based on the number of attached devices, like the number of hard drives. So you had like six, 12, and then unlimited 59, 89, 129. And they did prorate you if you started out here and then went to the next and then went to the next, you just paid what was in between. So what are we going to? If you want to jump in and stay with the legacy pricing, you need to, and I'll say this, you need to do this before the 27th. Go buy it, whatever you need to do. I even saw that you could pre-buy them and everything I was on their forum thread. So definitely look, look around for that if you want to stick with the legacy pricing. Because here we go. Here's what it is. The new license types. They're going to a starter, unleashed, and a lifetime. I was surprised to really see the lifetime. I know it's 250 a little sticker shock there. But think about it. There is no yearly fee. Look, no extension fee. So the way this works in a nutshell is if you want to just pay 50 bucks, get your six devices and you'll get updates and everything and new features for a year. And hey, if you want to sit out for a year, I think they'll even get it's like security. It's something like really crazy comes about, but you won't get like new features. Now, Unleashed, that's unlimited 109 one time cost, but you're still going to get the thirty six dollar ding a year now hey i understand it everybody's trying to survive in this world especially with all the inflation crap and everything going on it may not make sense for them to just you know do a one-time fee but that's why i was kind of surprised here but i guess they've worked the economics of everything and figure that if you're going to pay the 250 then maybe they won't get many i'm not sure i'm not an economic major and break it down for everything. But you can do the math on things of like, hey, am I going to pay this 250 over the course of three or four years? Then, you know, based on this, well, then jump in, just jump in and do the lifetime. So now legacy users pay attention here. I had this exact question whenever I was you know, saw the announcement and everything was, hey, would I be able to upgrade my legacy key, which is a key bought before the 27th? And I do like this right here. I wanted to note, I do thank Unraid for doing this. As promised, you can still access all updates for life and, and upgrade your basic or plus licenses. And then once they do the 27th, they will no longer be sold. So again, I'm going to say it again. If you want to buy one, you've been on the fence for buying a license in Unraid and you don't want that yearly ding, then go ahead and buy one before the 27th. Now, you will, after the 27th, if you had a legacy key, be able to purchase and upgrade it. And it won't be able to purchase a brand new one. You'll be able to upgrade what you have. And here's the new pricing for that. And you can... Oddly enough, you can convert your legacy stuff over to the new deal. Like if you want to convert your plus over to Unleashed for $19, but then you're going to continue to get year after year that ding. Now, I'm curious. I don't only question I have and I'm wondering if, if you can upgrade the life if you were 
on Unleashed and then upgrade to Lifetime. I'm not exactly sure of that one. I'll have to do some additional reading. If you know the answer to that, then uh, definitely let us know down below. So I've probably rambled on enough about this and really more of a PSA warning to things. And uh, yeah, if you want to check out this blog post on there, get a wrap. You know, there's, there's the FAQ here, et cetera. I may have answered they may answer one of my own questions here, which I was just talking about. Look, I have a starter. Yeah, how, there it is right there. And I'm, but I'm ready to go to lifetime. So you can upgrade from starter to lifetime for 209. So that kind of answers my own question there. And no, I'm not just trying to drive interactions on the YouTube video like many other channels do. I just legitimately had a question. I promised to talk about procrastination. And uh, so here it is. And yeah, I did some previous video clips of playing around with ZFS on my test box and some stuff never makes it over to the actual YouTube channel. I'm not sure where to use it or it just didn't turn out great. And I played around with some ZFS stuff on three drives and how I exactly set those up. I know with the current version, it's not very, I don't know, easy to go through and set them up. It's not like the array where you just click, click, click and go. You got to kind of do a little digging, but it wasn't too bad. And hopefully that'll fix itself in the, they talk about in seven and as well as talking about growing the ZFS arrays and not even requiring to have an unrate array, which is pretty cool. I still would like them to see if they would have one in Unraid, I know it sounds funny, with no arrays for like even cheaper for running on laptop because really the Docker GUI and VM GUI of Unraid and notification thing is just second to none. And I know some people, you know, lazy like myself and don't want to spin up a whole deal and set all that up and just the GUI makes it simple and don't mind paying the extra fee for that. So I don't know, but it still seems, you know, kind of pricey to do it for what, $50? And then you're going to turn around and have to get the annual extension fees. That's probably a little bit more than I'd want to do without any arrays. So enough with that. Let's roll some of the footage and then I'll tie in some stuff in the back because I wanted to do some performance measures on ZFS compared to the old array to see what the advantage is. You can find all the links for everything down below. Of course, if you can stop now or skip around to the various chapters. And I do appreciate everyone watching. Couldn't do it without all the YouTube members, Patreon members. And um, sorry about bumping the mic and roll the clip. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add the other pool as well, which I remember is kind of weird from what I was reading. We're going to do um, ZFS pool. And we need three slots. And then we'll go through here and we'll just, in no particular order, I don't think it really makes a difference because I have all three the same drives. It's going to strip across them. So we'll do this one here. Let it refresh. Do this one here. Let it refresh. And let it, this one. And yeah, I've got CRC errors on those. We just have to acknowledge them a little bit. So then we should be able to... Oh. This is the one thing is different. I find, I wish they would have something to change, but if you click on ZFS pool here and you got to come over here and change the file system type. So I'm going to change this to ZFS. Now, if you want to do ZFS encrypted, you're more than welcome to um, just make sure if you ever lose your key. Yeah. Don't contact me. ZFS, I'm leaving it at raid Z one group of three devices. Now this is a decent CPU. So I'm gonna leave compression on instead of off. And I know if you really have an older CPU, I know there's a lot of talk about, hey, should you not use compression? Should you, whatever. I'm going to use compression and we'll hit apply and we should be good to go. Now it's gonna complain because it wants to wipe out the drives. You're gonna have to format stuff but you just kind of kind of have to walk through that, especially when I've got all of these drives. I think I've had stuff on them. Um, I don't want that stuff anymore. So this is my little test box here. I mean, I'm on 6.12.8. So I did update, you know, a couple revisions based on the, from the previous clip. And I haven't changed a whole lot. I've added another just simple, I think two terabyte drive up here. Um, these are kind of cheap older drives. Like I say, it's just my test box for playing around and doing stuff like this and kind of learning things. 
So we got those older, you know, six terabyte uh, Western Digital drives. They are Western, Di Western Digital Reds, and they've got quite a few hours on them, which is totally fine. They're perfect for this. Just to give a little more back story to this, this is a Ryzen 5 3600 with 32 gig of RAM. It's my older box and also do have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet card in it for doing all the things. So we've got starting out with two shares. I've got backup ZFS, which is just going to the ZFS pool, no cash, anything involved. Then I've got just a straight backup share that goes straight to the array, no cash. So it's going to have to dump directly to the spinners. So we're going to start out in backup ZFS. So I've got a folder called delete me and I'm going to drop a 50 gig file over here from my NVMe on a 2.5 gigabit. So shouldn't be any limit. The limits here, we should run into the bottleneck is the network adapter, um, of course, or the spinner. So the 50 gig file, I chose a 50 gig file because I want to blow out any type of cache of memory caching or whatever. So we're starting out and we've got we're maxing out. You can see we're flatlining. We're the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, no problem. And the cool part about there's no, let me minimize this, is we can see right here is you can see with ZFS, it's stripping that data across. And that's one of the advantages of doing ZFS. It strips the data across all the drives at one time. Now, one of the disadvantages of that versus the Unraid array is if you lose too much, you know, like say I, right now I'm running this where if I lose one drive, I'm still fine, I can rebuild. But if I lose two drives, then I lost it all. And unlike Unraid array, that if you lose too much parity, then you can still see what's on those drives, just except the drives you lost, of course because you doesn't strip it across. And so you may have bits and pieces of your data and you only lost some of it instead of the entire array. Now I have seen, I get some of the dips here and everything, but maybe that's due to some of the older drives. But for the most part, I've been pretty impressed with the ZFS drive array on this. It works pretty damn well. I've dumped like a massive like amount. I've had some backups and stuff of like two terabytes and stuff, and I've thrown it on here and no issues dropping it across and everything. You don't have to worry about, you know, hey, am I going to fill up my cache and then blow out my cache and then screw up a bunch of my Docker container stuff? No, you don't have any of that issues. You just dump the data and call it a day and it's going to work. Now, of course, with ZFS, you can also do the snapshots and everything and the easier backups, you get the compression. So ZFS is pretty damn awesome. I love that they are putting that into Unraid, but of course, it's not as easy to, you know, grow your array at the time. Like, you know, like the Unraid arrays, that's one of the main advantages I like about it is being able to, I started out with like three drives. And on my main system, I've got like 10 or 12 drive now. And so it allows you to just grow things based on, you know, when you're broke and you can only like me and you're going to afford like one drive here and there and not, you know, be able to afford a bunch of drives and move everything at once. But according to the stuff on that Unraid 7, they're going to talk about some of the stuff you didn't watch that one and some of the features of hopefully being able to grow the array much easier with ZFS, which I'm really looking forward to see how that works. What happens when we take the same exact file, my backup folder, that's just on the array, the older array. This is just the Unraid array. And I'll go ahead and make sure and spin these up and drop it over here. And you'll see quickly, it's running at the, you know, 280 megabit, 280 megabytes a second. Now you're going to see it drop off tremendously because what's going to happen is going to run out of cache RAM that, you know, just basically the Linux kernel is caching some of the drive stuff. And there it is. You can see it's filled up and it's trying to write what's happened. What's happening is this smaller disk there's nothing happening, no writes to it at all. So it's dumping the entire file over to this one drive. And then it's also having to write parity at the same time. 
So whichever one is the slowest is going to be your limit of things because, yeah, it's just writing kind of like one copy of the file right now. So I'm only getting that 40 megabytes a second because of that. Now, I'm sure if I had some little quicker drives in here, you know, like 7,200 RPM, larger drives, newer drives, then I would probably get like, I don't know, 70, 80, 90 or something like that. I don't, not exactly sure. But you can see the advantage of the ZFS when you have multiple drives, it strips it across. Now you say, well, what about cash, Travis? You, it, that's what everything, you got one sitting right here, 500 gig. Well, let's go try it. Now, what you do need to do to enable the cache, and I like that they've changed this in Unraid because it was really confusing for a lot of the users. So if you notice over here, you get this nice picture. Pictures are great. Is you've got its cache, and then it wants to stick it to the array and enforce it to the cache. That's for like your app data, for like all your Docker containers. It's kind of like it'll spill over to the array, but then it always wants to try to put it back in the cache. And so that's what the arrow is. Same, look over here, these ISOs, it's going to throw it on cache first, but then it wants to stick it on the array when it's, you know, sitting at rest. So basically, and so mine is actually backup right now is just set to just only array. That's a good and a bad thing. So if you have an unraid array and you're trying to dump a lot of data at one time to it, like several terabytes, you probably want to change stuff to just array because you don't blow out your cache. So if, where you set this at, you just click on it. And in primary storage, if the cool thing, if you're ever curious, I do have this zoomed in so it rolls off. I zoom in for all the good mobile users so don't get mad at me. If you ever just click on it, if you want to read more about the help. So primary storage, I want this to go to cache. And then my secondary storage, because I don't want it just on cache, is then I want it on array. And then what do I want how do I want it to go? So I want it to start out on cache and then get moved to array for the mover. So we'll apply. Now the mover, usually you'll have that scheduled at say 2 a.m., 3 a.m. when you're sleeping. And that way it'll move all of your cache stuff that you wrote during the day over to the array. But do keep in mind that it, there's no redundancy unless you do have some cache redundancy set up that it's gonna be out there and kind of more risk to it until it gets moved to the array. So if you're moving some you know, data that you really need to, go ahead and invoke the mover right away. So now we have shares and then we'll look up backup. Now you have cache array. So let's go give that a shot. You can see the same thing. I'm gonna drag over that 50 gigabyte file and you can see here, it's starting out at 280 and we jump over to the main. I'll bring that back up. You'll notice the three you know, drives in the array are have zero writes going on. And, but all the writes are happening over here on the cache. So the, you can see the beauty of it is that it just, you know, it's fast storage. It's NVMe storage. So the bottleneck here is definitely the network adapter. So yeah, you can see I had one little dip right there and that was it but everything's been running, it's maxing out 2.5 gigabit ethernet. Yeah, when you do go read it, keep in mind, only one spinner is gonna give you that data, not like ZFS, where it's gonna have three spinners giving it back to you. And then, so you should have that same speed potentially on ZFS when you do reads as well. So you can see the performance increase is just massive for ZFS, but there are some drawbacks with ZFS at this time. So pretty cool feature, I kinda like that with Unraid, I mean, it kind of gives you that, you know, I don't know, best of both worlds, but then when you go to read it, it's kind of slow, but then we have just a lot of media that you may be slowly ingesting, like streaming through Plex, probably pretty fine. But if you have a lot of performance that you need to, you know, read and write and dump and everything back and forth all in the same day, you might be interested in spinning yourself up a ZFS pool, but do some planning before you do that and uh, make your make it easier on yourself at this time. And, you know, get enough drives in that pool and enjoy being able to have that performance increase. So if there are some other Unraid subjects you'd like to dig into and like to see me cover, shoot me a comment down below and 
I'm going to be doing some of the, my Docker stuff. I've been using the Unraid stuff for like six, seven, eight years, and it's been pretty damn solid and so easy to use. So that about do it for this one. Press all them buttons, and y'all take care.